and we return to Book 5 of Homer's The Iliad, where Diomedes fights the gods. And if you haven't caught up to Book 5 yet, take a look in the description down below where you will see the links to Book 1 through 4 to be able to watch and listen to the summaries of Homer's The Iliad. But if you are caught up, then without further ado, we shall begin where Book 4 ends in the middle of the surging battle where Pallas Athena comes down to empower Diomedes to sweep through the Trojan ranks. She does this because the archer Pandarus shoots Diomedes, striking him hard into the shoulder. As Diomedes uh, begins to falter, he appeals to Athena, who in turn uh, uh, renews his strength and grants him the power to see who is a god amongst the Trojan soldiers. But she gives him strict instruction not to engage them, as it will mean his certain doom. With one exception, however. She tells him that Aphrodite has no place in war, and he should not hold back when he sees her. Now, as a side note, this is actually a jab at a big political debate and uh, nature that was going on inside of ancient Greece at the time, and even previous to it where much like in Catholicism, different gods or different uh, saints are patronized for different things in different regions. And ancient Greece was no exception. Aphrodite in Sparta and some other Greek city-states was actually seen as a god of war. And of course, inside of Sparta, everything is obviously a god of war. But it's important to note that it was in other Greek city-states as well. And this is seen as a quick little jab into the debate and basically politicizing inside of a uh, media, something that has been done since the dawn of man, so it's not unique uh, for everybody complaining about their politicizing everything nowadays. It's been done since the dawn of time. Uh, it was just a little jab at that, saying, no, no, see, Aphrodite's not. She's not a war god. She's goddess of love. She's goddess of this and that. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. It's just an interesting side note as to why this line was put in here. Now, back to the actual story. Both Aeneas and Pandarus charge Diomedes while he's injured, and unfortunately for them, (laughs) Athena guides Diomedes' spear, killing the archer Pandarus. Well, he can't kill Aeneas, though, because anybody who, as a spoiler alert, The Aeneas is a very important character in Virgil's book called The Aeneid. So, big spoiler on here, Aeneas is going to get away. But, Athena grants Diomedes the strength to lift a boulder off of the ground, and he hurls it at Aeneas, crushing the man's hip. As he pounces on top of him, ready to strike the killing blow, Aphrodite swoops in to carry Aeneas away. Now, (laughs) Diomedes is rightfully pissed off that his vengeance has been taken away from him by Aphrodite. Now, he doesn't fear the wrath of a weakling god. He remembers Athena's words as he stalks through the battlefield and chasing down Aphrodite. And upon catching the goddess, Diomedes slashes at her wrist, forcing her to drop Aeneas and bolt back up to Olympus, where she cries to Zeus. Diomedes is close to his prey and ready to exact vengeance for his lost friend, when Apollo swoops down, grabs Aeneas to be healed, and returns to the battlefield. At first, Diomedes in his blind rage age, goes to attack Apollo, but he gets warned, warned by Apollo that not all gods are as weak as Aphrodite, and that he should cease his rampage against him. And Diomedes quickly comes to his senses and abandons his pursuit as he is royally outmatched in this uh, engagement. He has no chance in hell in beating Apollo. And so, with Diomedes has his rampage going on, heroes on both sides of this conflict are meeting the dark embrace of death as they go into rages over the loss of fellow soldiers and friends, showing how quickly a man can lose his sense in war to emotion that leads them to ruin and fueling this cycle of war. And as the fighting rages on, the Achaeans are slowly beginning to lose ground. 
out. And seeing the tides of war swinging out of her favor, Athena and Hera both dress for battle and gain Zeus's permission to deal Ares a stunning blow. Hera then appears to the retreating Achaeans and shames them. She points out to them that Achilles had never let the Trojans out from beyond their walls. Athena, on the other hand, goes back to Diomedes and encourages him to engage Ares. Now, for Diomedes, this, this sounds suicidal. He has been told by Athena already, do not go after the gods besides Aphrodite, you have no chance in hell. And now here comes a god telling him, sorry, the same god to go tell him, go attack Ares, the literal god of war. Diomedes' mind is that he has absolutely no chance in hell of fighting this. But after listening to Athena, who says that, he, that she will protect Diomedes from certain doom, Diomedes finds Ares and stabs him in the gut with his spear. Here. And, well, Athena guides Ares' spear away from, Af uh, from Diomedes, Ades, allowing him to strike a blow, not a deathly blow, but, enough, but a serious enough blow that a deathless god is forced to leave the, uh, the battlefield and fled by mortal's hand. He strikes off back to Olympus. <laughs> Their job done. Hera and Athena abandon the Diomedes to, Diomedes to this and swoop back to Olympus triumphantly. Ares then begs Zeus to let him be healed and to issue vengeance for the wound caused to two of his immortal children by Diomedes, who is but a mortal who believes himself stu uh, strong enough to strike down two gods. Zeus instead scolds Ares, calling him both a failure and a disappointment. He even goes as far as to say that if Ares was not his child, he would have cast him from Olympus and put him even below the Titans. Now, Ares now has some physical wounds, he has his physical wounds healed, but his emotional ones are cut even deeper, and he will not return to the battlefield. And with that, Book 5 of the Iliad ends. And if you're interested in continuing to follow along with this, then don't hesitate to a, uh, click, uh, to like, subscribe. But if you aren't interested in it, and uh, you did not like this on there, then please give me a comment and tell me how I can improve, and don't hesitate to dislike it. Uh, but if you would like to help out the channel, there is something you can do. There's an affiliate link in the link in the description below, where you can pick up a nice leather-bound edition with gilded edges of the Homer's The Iliad and The Odyssey. This is a translation by Samuel Butler, which, in my opinion, is a good transi uh, translation. It's not uh, one that keeps the poetry form of it, such as Fargal's edition, but it's one that is old enough that it actually falls underneath public domain, and it's a, uh, it's just a well-done trans uh, translation, in my opinion. And with that, I look forward to seeing all of you guys uh, later for book six of the Iliad. Take care.